Hey, what's up guys? My name is Nam. So in today's video, I'm gonna go over five stocks that are worth looking into for the month of July. So these stocks are more like long-term plays. So what I mean by that is investing into these stocks for weeks to possibly months. So if that's not your trading strategy where you like to day trade or you like to swing trade where you hold position for a couple of days, this may not be the right video for you. But if you're a lazy investor like myself, this video is perfect for you. So no more wasting of your time. Let's go right into the stocks. So the first stock that we will be talking about will be Palomar Holdings. Palomar Holdings provides specialty property insurance. So they provide property insurance products like residential and commercial earthquake, specialty homeowners, Hawaii hurricane, residential flood. So in a nutshell, this company is an insurance company for homeowners and commercial businesses. All right, so I'm gonna pull out my phone just to make sure I have all the numbers correct because there's so many times I just mess up the numbers. So currently Palomar Holdings, they are currently trading at around 85, 89. So probably around $86 or so. So the 52 week range for this particular stock is from $23 all the way up to $90. So in the past year, it kind of went up by 3x, 3.5x. Um, average trading volume is around 200,000 to 400,000. Um, the market cap for this particular stock is around $2 billion. The PE ratio is 55. So it was a little bit on the higher side. If you're a fundamental investor where you're looking to invest into companies for years down the road, so this may look a little bit too expensive for you, but since I'm more of a trader, so this really doesn't matter to me as much. So unfortunately, this company does not pay any dividends. So now let's take a look at the financials for this particular stock. So starting in 2016, it's been having a gross revenue of around $42 million. And recently in 2019, there's revenue of $113 million. So that's pretty steady growth right there. Now let's take a look at the net income. Net income is from 6 million all the way up to 10 million. Also steady growth year by year. 2018 was their biggest year where they had $18 million in net income. So for Palomar, according to Yahoo Finance, they do consider this company a buy as well. So now let's take a look at his technicals. So let me give you guys a quick rundown of what I use for technical analysis. I use the Ichimoku Cloud System. I also have the MACD and also the RSI. So as of right now, since there's not that much information, there's not that much stuff that's going on down here, but you'll see the indicators a lot better on the weekly charts. So starting on the monthly charts, as you guys can see here, is making higher highs. It's currently still in a bull trend. Um, there was a little bit of choppiness from November of 2019 all the way up to March of 2020 but ever since then it still continue its bull run so the main reason why I like to stock a lot is mainly due to the weekly charts so if you look at the cloud system here the conversion line is above the baseline bullish cloud but there's also some chart patterns that's going on right here it looks like it's a bullish pendant so as you guys can see here it recently broke out at around the $83 point. So that's your trigger candle for entry. So me personally, I would enter right around here on Monday. I would also have a stop loss at around $77.80 or so. So that's more like a mental stop loss. So sometimes with stop losses, you can get triggered out. So just something just to keep in mind. So let's take a look at the MACD down here. So it recently did cross back on May 18th of 2020, um, RSI. As of right now, it's kind of trending down. So it looks like it could be a bearish divergence, but it's not overbought as of right now. So still consider a pretty good buy. I typically don't look at the daily charts or the hourly charts. I mainly just look at the weekly charts since I invest for weeks at a time to possibly months. So this is why I look at only monthly and weekly charts. So the second stock that we will be talking about will be Splunk Inc. So in a nutshell, Splunk Inc. develops and markets software solutions that enable organizations to gain real-time operational intelligence in the U.S. and also internationally. All right, so let's quickly go over the numbers for this particular stock. So currently for Splunk, it's trading around $200. The 52 week range for the stock is from $93 all the way up to $205. So basically double in price within the past year. Average trading volume is around 2 million with a recent volume of around 1.5 million. There's a market cap of $31 billion. Unfortunately, this stock does not show the PE ratio and also the stock does not have a dividend yield. So now let's take a look at the financials for this particular stock year over year. So starting back in 2017, it was making around $900 million. Um, 2018, 2019 has been steady growth year after year. And most recently when it reported back in January, it was making over $2 billion a year. 
in total revenue. So now let's talk about the net income. So year after year, starting from 2017, 2020, they've been operating in a loss. It has been ranging anywhere from 260 to $330 million. So that's not necessarily a bad thing because they're operating as losses, meaning that they're just reinvesting all of their earnings back into the company. So as you guys can see, they are earning quite a bit year after year in total revenue. So they are earning a lot of money. So from a fundamental standpoint, this is still a pretty legit company. So according to Yahoo Finance, this company Splunk, I think I'm saying it right, Splunk or Splunk, they do consider this company to be a buy as well. So now let's take a look at its technicals. So first, let's take a look at the monthly for Splunk. So ever since it's been induction, it's been pretty bullish and it's been pretty choppy for a while since uh, November of 2017. So as you guys can see here, all signals are bullish. Conversion line is above baseline, bullish cloud. MACD is bullish. So the RSI is almost looking like it's almost overbought. But as of right now, it's still bullish. Let's take a look at the weekly charts. As of right now, it looks kind of busy right now, so I'll explain everything in detail. On the Ichimoku cloud, everything looks bullish, okay? Lagging span, bullish. Conversion line, um, baseline, bullish. Bullish cloud, okay? MACD is going upwards, bullish signal. RSI is going upwards as well, almost getting to overbought territory. So this one is a little bit more of a higher risk entry. Let's break it down a little bit further. The main reason why I have this here, this is a Fibonacci retracement, okay? This is something that you can use to kind of predict where it'll be a good uh, selling point. I put my retracement as a recent low at around $95. It went up to almost around $190, then it retraced just a little bit. As of right now, a good selling point, um, any part of these points right here could be good selling points. So whenever I trade stocks, I tend to look for a risk and reward ratio of two to one. So if I wanna make $20, I'm only willing to lose 10. So as of right now, according to my risk and reward ratio, my stop loss is around $171 and my sell point is around $255. So whenever the price moves up to $255, this is where I can decide to sell or just move up my stop loss so I just lock in those profits. So another reason why I like this stock a lot is that it recently broke out of a chart pattern. As of right now, this pattern right here is a bullish flag. There's a couple ways you could take a look at it. You could enter right after it breaks out or you can enter right after it retests that point. But me personally, I wouldn't mind entering right here either way, but just make sure you have a stop loss in place. So now let's talk about the third company, which is Grocery Outing Corp, which is the ticker symbol GO. So in a nutshell, Grocery Outlet Holding Corp owns and operates a chain of grocery stores inside of the United States. So as of December 28, 2019, it had around 374 stores. So now let's take a look at the numbers. Go is currently trading around $42.32. So the 52 week range for this stock is from $28 all the way up to $47. So it almost doubled in price within the last year. So the average volume for this particular stock is around 1.6 million shares per day. The market cap is uh, 3.8 billion. The P ratio, I don't know how correct this is, is about 5,287. I'm not sure if that's correct because that's kind of ridiculously high. No dividends for this particular stock, unfortunately. So now let's take a look at the financials. So on a yearly basis, the total revenue for this particular company, starting from 2016, it is $1.8 billion all the way up to $2.5 billion, most recently in 2019. So that's good. So it's having year over year gains. Now let's take a look at the net income. Net income has been ranging from 10 million all the way up to 15 million as of late. It had its biggest year back in 2017, but ever since 2018 and 2019, it's been pretty steady around $15 million of net income. So according to Yahoo Finance, they do consider this company a buy. I typically don't like to look at these trends that much because I like to do the analysis myself. So let's take a look at its technicals. All right, so now let's take a look at Go on the monthly charts. So on the monthly charts, there's really not that much that's going on because there's really not enough information that we can actually use. For our weekly charts, we're gonna could work off of what we can see right now. You can see the lag span is bullish. Right now, the cloud looks kind of bearish as of right now. So for the baseline and conversion line, they are pointing upwards, so that's a bullish signal. MACD is also trending upwards as well bullish rsi bullish not overbought yet so this right here would have been your trigger candle so i would enter in this candle right here so on monday i would buy whatever position it is so from a technical standpoint even though the price is still going up this is a little bit more of a riskier trade but just make sure you do have a stop loss in mind of where you want to place it for me personally i would probably put it at the key june sometimes you put it at the tech sin, but me personally i like the key june it's a little bit stronger um you can make it tighter if you like around 39 dollars and set a sell price at around 47 dollars, which was the all-time high a few months ago so now let's talk about the fourth stock which is ihs market limited um, the ticker symbol is info so in a nutshell, this company provides critical information, analytics, and solutions for various industries and markets that drive economies worldwide. 
All right, so now let's take a look at the numbers for this particular stock. So for info, it's currently trading around $76.26. So the 52 week range for this stock is around $44 all the way up to $81. So as you guys can see recently, it did drop quite a bit from its all time high. Average trading volume for the stock is around 2.2 million with a most recent volume of 1.2 million. The market cap for this company is at $30 billion and also a PE ratio of 38. So far, any of the stocks I mentioned didn't have any dividend yield. So this stock has, is a little bit on the lower side, is at 0.9%. All right, so now let's take a look at the financials for this particular company starting back in 2016. It was making around $2.7 billion and as of late, back in 2019, it was making $4.4 billion. So year after year, is having an increase in revenue. So now let's take a look at the net income. Net income has been pretty steady as well. So from 2016, it was making around $100. $150 million. So as of late in 2019, it was making $500 million. So for this company, there's been a significant boost on the money that is actually keeping. So this is a pretty legit company. So according to Yahoo Finance, they do consider this company a buy, but the main reason why I like it is mainly to do this technical analysis. So now let's jump into the computer. All right, so now let's take a look at info on the monthly charts. So for the Ichimoku cloud system, all signals are still bullish. The line right here is still flat, meaning that it may be choppy in the future, but cloud starting to flatten out, but still bullish. So the MACD is starting to cross over again. So that could be another bullish signal, but it's a little bit lower than the previous high. So just keep an eye out for a bearish divergence. RSI is almost very similar to the MACD. So just keep an eye out for a uh, hidden bearish divergence. So on the weekly charts, it looks pretty interesting. As you guys can see here, the price has been rising right above the cloud, all right? So it's basically riding this cloud right here. Also, it has not dipped below the conversion line either. So that could be a good stop loss if you consider to have one. MACD has recently crossed back in May 26. RSI is looking bullish as well, so it's pointing upwards. Now let's take a look at the cloud. Cloud still looking bullish. Lagging span is still in price. If you want to follow the Ichimoku cloud system to a T, this is not a good entry point as of right now because all the signs are not there quite yet. So me personally, I would still enter with we'll a stop loss right below the, the conversion line right here. All right, so the fifth company that we will be talking about will be Big Lots. The ticker symbol was B-I-G. So in a nutshell, Big Lots is a discounted retailer inside of the United States. This company also offers products under different type of categories, such as furniture, mattresses, Christmas stuff. So a little bit of everything inside of Big Lots if you've ever been to one. Um, but just make sure you look at the expiration tag when you buy food there, okay? All right, so now let's take a look at the numbers for Big Lots. So currently Big Lots is currently trading around $41.15. The 52 week range for this stock is around $10 to all the way up to $44. So almost a 4X gain from lowest point to the highest point. So the average trading volume for this particular stock is around 2.2 million shares. Market cap is at 1.6 million. So the PE ratio for this particular stock is around 5.8, which is pretty good actually. Um, the dividend yield is actually pretty nice as well, is at 2.94%. It's almost at 3%, so if you're interested in dividend stocks, this is a pretty great payout for you. So now let's take a look at the financials for this particular company. So since this is in the retail sector, the margins are usually not that great. So back in 2017, it was making around $5.2 billion. And as of late in January of 2020, it was making $5.3 billion. So as for total revenue, it's been pretty stagnant. It's been about the same. Just a little bit of growth year by year, but not as much. So now let's take a look at the net income. So back in 2017, net income is around $152 million. And as of late, it's $242 million. So there was some stagnation from 2017 to 2019, but as of 2020, they've been keeping a lot more of their money. So according to Yahoo Finance, they do consider this company to be a little bit between a buy and hold. Um, they kind of have mixed feelings about it. But kind of the main reason why I like this stock is mainly due to the technical analysis. So now let's take a look at the charts. Big Lots, it kind of looks like a big mess, right? So it's going upwards, but it's kind of like a lot of zigzags. And it's been pretty bearish for almost two years now, um, starting back in December uh, 2017, all the way up to most recently. So it just pumped right back up in March, which most stocks did as well. MACD on the monthly is going upwards. So is RSI. So the reason why I like Big Lots a lot is mainly due to the technicals on the weekly charts. So right here is a Kumo breakout, all right? So it's breaking out of the cloud. So that's a good entry point. Sometimes people don't enter right here just due to the fact that the lag and span is still inside of the cloud. But as of right now, the cloud is starting to become bullish, which is a good sign. Lag and span is outside the cloud, bullish signal as well. MACD bullish, RSI bullish, almost overbought a little bit. But now let's take a look at the price action a little bit closer. So the price, right after it broke out of the cloud, it did retrace back to the conversion line. 
So this could be a good entry point since this is your trigger candle right here because it bounced right off that price. It's really up to you if you want to wait to see if it goes back down to 33 and a half or you could enter right here with a stop loss at around 33 and a half. Me personally, I would still buy it when Monday comes around and just have a stop loss right around here or you can have it on top of the cloud right here as well. So as of right now, it's starting to get out of its bearish trend and starting a new trend, which is bullish. So before I go, if you want to buy any of these stocks, I do have a referral link for Webull down in the description. You could get two free stocks value up to $1,400. If you haven't already, make sure you give this video a like because that really helps support the channel. All right, guys, I'll see you guys next time.